Thank you, Dr. Newton. I really appreciate that. Um, hello, my name is Rena Flores Hansen, and I'm the project direct uh, project director for CTE. And on behalf of the Los Angeles County Office of Education, I'm honored to welcome you to the CTE Introduction to Cybersecurity Webinar. I'm pleased and overjoyed that we have gathered an amazing cross-section of professionals to learn more about the exciting and growing field of cybersecurity. Like never before, students are learning in virtual classrooms and employers are supporting remote work. Building and maintaining safe cyber systems relies on our collective ability to train the next generation of specialists. So here at LEGO, we are driven by impact goals with a focus on improving student outcomes and growing. We do this by strengthening our community partnerships and building collective networks. We are so thankful for all of the presenters and the attendees who are here today with our common goal of learning more about how we can inspire and prepare the next generation of cybersecurity experts. LACO CTE unit provides targeted professional development and training opportunities to strengthen high quality programs with a focus on access and equity for all students. We are proud to host four K-12 strong work workforce program pathway coordinators, and we support LEAs by processing designated subject credentials in CTE and adult education. We appreciate your participation today and look forward to seeing the survey feedback you provide that will help inform how we can continue to meet our stakeholders' needs. I am very confident that you will take away new learning and inspiration from today's sessions and that we will each commit to action steps of informing our students, our student communities about career opportunities available to them. So without further ado, thank you for your time and enjoy our webinar. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Raina. And uh, for those of you who've been with LACO CTE, you know that Raina is um, new to our office. And so we just want to give a hearty um, uh, welcome and thank you for that great introduction. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Gina Newton. I am one of the CTE coordinators here at the Los Angeles County Office of Education, Office of Career Tech Education. And today I am so excited as I always am, but today we're gonna to be focusing on a unique industry sector and even more so a focused area of that industry sector and that is cyber security. As we go through this, we've got, we've got some dynamic, uh, well-versed experts and I, I dare and will stand behind that and say experts. I want you to be thinking about this. And they're going to cover a, a, a gamut of different things. Think about the time where you had an issue with cybersecurity, be it a password, be it your checking account, happened to me, uh, be it something that happened in your personal and your professional life that kind of set you off kilter because something was infiltrated. We're gonna be looking at what that industry sector looks like and how we can uh, inform our students and our programs, our pathways to get us on a track to, uh, into this particular industry sector. So I'm gonna get started here. As always, I've got some background information that I'm gonna share with you in this here PowerPoint that I have. A reminder of some very important norms and some information for you. This event is being recorded. We ask that you please remain muted. There will be an opportunity to unmute yourselves, um, but to use the monitor chat for comments and questions at this time. A reminder also, if you haven't already, to upgrade to the latest version of Zoom so that you can move into the breakout rooms. If you don't have that, th there's no problem. I can do it manually. It just may take a minute or two. And the reminder also that this recording, this PowerPoint presentation, and our May CTE newsletter will be emailed to you. So keep an eye out for those. Our agenda today looks a little something like this. We have our welcome. We have some stats and facts that I'm gonna to bring to you in just a moment. And then we have some guest introductions and then breakout room sessions. And then we're gonna all come back together and have a presenter panel discussion with some Q&A. And then we're gonna close it and then we're gonna go enjoy our weekends. Everybody good with that? Terrific. So the objectives here are threefold. 
and you can see them here on your screen. I won't read them verbatim, but it just gives you an idea of why we are here. This is actually our second cybersecurity uh, introduction webinar. Uh, our first one was back in November. And what we found is that there were a lot of questions regarding high school students in particular. And when I say questions regarding them, they wanted to be on here. So I got an email, I got calls in regards to, you know, can I bring my students? And absolutely positively. If your students weren't able to uh, make it here, I invite you again to share the recording with them. We have some great resources at the end um, for them specifically and um, to make them really a part of this journey because that's why we're all here on behalf of our students. LACO, what do our student populations look like? Well, if you don't know, now you know. And it's actually grown from the numbers that you're seeing here on your screen. Uh, we are steeped in a plethora of different ethnicities and races and backgrounds and socioeconomic levels. And we are in a prime position to bring to our students some great areas of careers that they might want to, if they haven't thought about already, move into. So this is what we're doing it for. We're focusing on these 11 elements of a high quality CTE program. In particular, these that I have outlined in red. We're looking at career, career exploration and guidance, high quality curriculum and instruction, industry partnerships, which are so crucial. So I thank our guests again here, and you'll hear me thank them throughout uh, for being here today and sharing their uh, expertise. There are 15 industry sectors. The one that we're focusing on today is in the bottom of your screen. Uh, it's to my left. I believe it's going to be to your left also. And it's information technology. That's the one that we're focusing on today. And what does it look like? And how do you find it? This way. You can actually go to Google and do a search right here. Put that in. And if you scroll down to page 40, you're gonna see information communications technology sector. And the items that I have here in bullets are those items that pertain to this particular industry sector. These are the pathways. And you're gonna hear a lot of talk about these today. What might it look like in your classroom? What might it look like in your CTE program? What might that pathway look like? How successful is it? And what is, and this is the big one that I always follow, we have to be presenting something to our students that the world is asking for. Otherwise, why are we doing this? So is cybersecurity, is technology a big one right now? I think you can answer that question. We all know that's a resounding yes. So I think we're ready. So I wanna share with you who our guests are today. And um, it, it's not me. These are folks who know their stuff and know it well. So let's let's take a minute here. First of all, we have Mr. All the way from Jersey City, New Jersey. We have Mohammed Mohammar. He is with Charter Oak Adult Education. He is an IT instructor. He is a certified EC Council instructor. He is an EC Council certified, and this is what got me, ethical hacker. And he's gonna talk about what does that mean? What does that look like? How our students can get into that? What it's like in a day in the life of. He received his bachelor's in applied mathematics, his master's of science in data science with a concentration in business analytics. And so he comes with a wealth of information um, all the way from the East Coast. So we are very glad to have him with us today. His counterpart, likewise, is Edward Dean O'Donnell. And, and we were joking earlier, I'm here in Riverside, and he's just literally right up the freeway in Moreno Valley. And Edward brings 38 years of IT experience to the table. And he's going to talk a little more about who he is and what he does in his particular session. He is an instructor extraordinaire. He has all kinds of stories and uh, advice and um, suggestions as to how to build your program and where you can go and how you can make that happen. This next person here that I'm going to share with you, you may recall her if you were with us last November. This is Ashley Richardson. 
She was the keynote at our first cybersecurity webinar that we had. And Ashley, oh my goodness, uh, just a power dynamic. She, and you can see here from her uh, list of uh, credentials and experiences and so forth, some of the things that stood out for me as I'm talking about her and talking with her and talking to her are her background is how she came up. And so when we move into our breakout rooms, which we'll do just very, very shortly, what she's going to do is that she is going to be speaking with you about her background, how she came from high school, how she moved through college. And incidentally, she's working on her one, two, three, fourth degree, fourth degree. And she also has a background. She's a Taekwondo black belt. Um, she is steeped in all kinds of languages, as are all of our guests here today. She teaches part-time at Sacramento City College. She's up in uh, Palo uh, Alto in the Santa Clara area. Uh, she's had a, a, a list of experiences. And I say that because she's so young. And so it just goes to show that it does not matter. You know, we all start somewhere. And she's the most recent, I think, that has started and has propelled her career. And so you see the span of experiences that are with us on today. So I'm just over the moon excited um, about what they're sharing. I'll say this little caveat before I move over. Um, again, I just want to share with everybody. It's so good to see you here. I'm so um, appreciative that you're with us. I think you're going to walk away with some new knowledge some new understandings and some new uh, appreciations. We're gonna open it up uh, a little later on. So be jotting down your questions, put them in the chat. We have Dr. Ann Welsh Treglia who is with us and she's gonna be monitoring the chat and she'll be bringing those questions uh, to the foreground so we can talk about them. It's gonna be very conversational. If you've been with me before, you know how I do it. It's just gonna be a good time on Friday talking about this particular uh, uh, industry sector. So as we have more people that are coming on, and thank you, Dr. Treglia, for uh, taking care of that, we are going to do this. These are the breakout rooms, and I want you to look at them carefully and look at how they are um, um, divided here. These are simply recommendations. You are welcome to go to whichever breakout room you want. Ashley is going to be speaking with us and talking about her story and how she came through the ranks and so forth. And so I'm recommending that our high school, our middle school students and their teachers attend her session. And that's going to be here in the main room. And then Mohammed Mohammer, or Mohammed Mohammar, forgive me, is going to be in breakout room number two. And he is going to be talking with the students and, and talking with uh, the teachers, the counselors, the administrators, and everyone. And he has a special request that when you go into his room, feel free to unmute yourselves. He wants to talk to you. He wants to feel the emotion. He wants to feel the energy in the room. He wants to get a feel for where you are and what your questions are and so forth. And then we have Edward Dean O'Donnell, my neighbor just up the road here. And he has, um, is, is welcoming the teachers and the counselors to come into his uh, room and to have a conversation about how to get your program, what types of things are needed to do that, what he's been doing, where he's going, and how you can be on that as well. In the meantime, Ashley, you go ahead and get started, my dear. Sweet. Thank you, Dr. Newton. I appreciate it. Well, thanks everyone for staying here and hanging out with me on this very bright, way too hot in April Friday. Uh, my name is Ashley Richardson Sequera, and I am a pre-sales security operations engineer, which just is a fancy way of saying, hey, customers, you should buy all this cool stuff because it'll make your security better. Um, I've been with Palo Alto Networks a little over three years, but before I kind of go into like my story and how I got here, I, I want to ask a couple questions and feel free to just reply in chat or you can chime in. I kind of, I, I want to, I, Muhammad inspired me. I kind of make this interactive. So um, how many of you or your students have ever been told that you can't do something because of your gender or the color of your skin or another characteristic that you can't change about yourself? And feel free to just like say me or yes, I have students, you know, you can throw it in chat. Yes, definitely. 
Yeah. And I know, I know the background about Will Rogers a little too well. So yes, absolutely. In that area. So many students. Um, I saw, yeah, I saw the hand raised. Thank you for that. So yeah. So already we already have tons in common. My, myself and your students were already the same. So already there's some hope there. Now, how many of you think that your students have experienced violence in your neighborhood or at home? Yes. And again, yeah, I'm sure the answer is like at least quite a few of us. So unfortunately, these are the realities that were very much the same for me as they are in the present day for a lot of students of color. So the last thing I'll ask is how many of you were worried that you or your students wouldn't have a place in STEM? Definitely. Well, have I got the story for you? Because I thought all those things happened to me. And that's definitely kind of how my story started. And, you know, here I am speaking to, you know, people that I remember being a little kid and like, wow, my teacher is the coolest, smartest person ever. And now you guys are listening to me. So I'm just like, wow, how did this happen? So um, I'll go into my immediate background. So I'm, I'm 32. So I'm definitely a millennial. Um, I'm married to an amazing man who I think is secretly listening to me on this call somewhere. And, uh, I have a really cool Corgi named Carbon. And so, yeah, again, how did I end up, you know, married with an awesome husband, a really expensive, cute dog, a nice apartment and all these things. Oh boy, y'all are in for it. So I grew up working in a working class household and, you know, my dad was a utility worker. My mom was a nurse. So not an uncommon story, especially here in the States, you know, for a lot of people of color, you know, things like nursing, things like utility work, that's, that's a way in to get a good stable job and be able to support your household. So for the most part, like we didn't like struggle, but my mom was a trauma nurse and eventually her, her time in nursing took her to a dark place. And she eventually began abusing and then dealing drugs and she ended up in jail. So from the get-go, I had to start off, you know, already a statistic in some ways, because I already had a parent who'd already have negative interactions with the criminal justice system. And, you know, my dad was effectively a single parent with his own health problems, you know, that he had to deal with. And then top it all off, my mom, right before she went to jail, had my sister who has cerebral palsy. So the home life was not ideal for, you know, being, you know, a, an A student or, being successful or having, you know, the wave of all these things just available and out there in the universe. So again, with one parent already in the criminal justice system and the tough home life of just caring for my special needs sister and trying to help take care of my dad while he worked really hard for both of us, it got hard very quickly. And, you know, I went to private school for the first few years just because uh, the neighborhood we lived in, it was way too scary to try that my parents didn't want to send me to public school. And that's unfortunate because we need to fund our public school systems because that's the school system that we usually, most of us have the most interaction with and that's what sets us up for the future. So I'm at this private school, lots of two home families, stable home life, uh, a lot of people that did not look like me, I'll just put it that way. And here I am this oddball, you know, I look different from everyone. I've got a parent in jail. And of course, you know how kids are. As soon as it slips to one person, the whole school knows about it. So I'm getting bullied for this. I'm getting treated badly. Like kids don't want to play with me at the playground and just, you know, and being a little kid, you know, I want everyone to like me. I'm totally that person. My husband will tell you like, Ashley is like the biggest, like wants to make everyone happy ever. Like she wants to save the world every day. So you know, me being that, that younger kid, I'm like, well, I don't have any friends. Nobody wants to talk to me, but I had video games. My dad, my dad was my best friend growing up. You know, we played Nintendo together. You know, he showed me, you know, he brought a computer home one day and I'm like, oh, like, what's that? And there was never a conversation about don't touch that. It was always, no, go see what it does. Look, we got this encyclopedia. Look, we have all this stuff. So as I'm maneuvering through all of this, you know, I was, so keep this in mind, I'm 32. So that means I was in K through 12 education from 93 to 2006. So again, having internet at home, let alone knowing the capabilities of what the internet even did, that was such a rarity. And we were afforded that because of my dad's work. So at age nine, I had an America online screen name and I started poking around on the internet and it was this cool place. Like you could shop and you could talk to friends and you could get super Nintendo cheat codes. So like for me, I'm just like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And even at this point, you know, this is like 99, 2000, there still wasn't like a clear cut path that said, 
hey, if you're into computers and this is what you like and this is what you want to do, this is where you'll end up, you know? So i had seen the movie Hackers in Theaters and I'm sure everyone knows how corny and hokey that movie was, but what it peaked in me was that I was already kind of hunting around for some of these crazy tools and these crazy concepts, trying to continue to understand this, this weird internet stuff. So I get to 2002, freshman in high school, um, things... I've calmed down, like we've at least reached a point of new normal in my family. So I've just doubled down on my exposure to the computer at this point. You know, I'm I'm trying to use IRC and find cool books and and get and beta test software and and look at these cool like unreleased video games. Shh, don't tell anybody. But like, you know, during this time growing up, that's when I really like was sure I was like, I'm I'm gonna do something with the computer. Um, but remember, I have this crazy home life. So I was totally that student that if I had applied myself, I would have been great. But because I knew the game, I knew the hustle, I'd already, you know, encountered what real life was like at a very young age. I already knew that like, oh yeah, I could just sit here and get good grades in high school, but I already knew it didn't matter because the odds were already stacked against me just because of how I looked. And I knew this because of the interactions that my mom had, you know, in, in nursing and then eventually jail. Like, she had peers that did the same thing as her and they got probation and kept their license. She went in, you know, so already I'm aware. So I was not going to have a grade to go to college. And this, again, I want to ask how many of you have students that are like super smart, super motivated, but like they will not do their homework or they're, they just, they just, they're just bored in class. Anyone have kids like that? I'm sure. So I apologize in advance to all my previous teachers that might see this someday. I apologize for being a brat from like 13 to 18. Um, <laughs> so again, didn't have the best grades coming out of high school. So the best thing that I knew, I had an uncle in the military and he's like, hey, um, I know that you're kind of in a situation where, you know, you're not a typical black girl and teachers don't know what to do with kids that had to grow up before the last day of high school. So like I already knew how to spot an undercover cop before I could fill out a college application. Like, let me just put it to you that way. <laughs> um, and I also knew the street price of what prescription drugs were before I had a checking account. So again, I, I didn't have a lot of options. So I joined the army because I knew I'd learn something, whether it was to listen or maybe pick up some skills. So I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wasn't banned in high school. So hilariously, I joined as a trumpet player in the army band. So I was a professional musician for six years of my army career. And it was a glamorous job, but being in the band, all everyone knows how to do is play instruments. So we don't have IT. We don't have like our physical fitness officer. We don't have anything like that. So we had to do that ourselves. So I was unofficial IT. And so that was the aha moment for me where I was like, oh, this is like way better than like anything I've ever done in my life. So I re-enlisted for this IT specialist job and I get retrained for IT. And I even got my security plus voucher, but the fight was not over. Um, again, I'm technically trained. I've got certifications, you know, I'm checking all these boxes, but I'm out here in the job market and the best I can do is like help desk positions. And it was so frustrating because I'm sitting here and I'm training, you know, my male counterparts and they're getting full-time positions and I'm getting passed over and getting fired without cause at 11 months and 29 days. So it just, you know, there was a lot of grinding in there. Things were really tough. Um, I remember at one point, you know, when we first had that first spike of like rent increase and stuff in the Bay Area and it got really hard. I was working at a startup and I ended up homeless because I ran out of money. I was sleeping in a garage like for a long time. So eventually it all came to fruition. Um, I actually met my now husband while I was serving in the army as an IT instructor in 2016. So um, he actually took me to my very first DEF CON. So if you think back to kind of what I've been through and, you know, I was already kind of curious about this and I already had some interest, that was like a complete pilgrimage for me. Um, I've known about DEF CON all the way back to DEF CON 1, but I couldn't go until I was much older. And at that moment, like I knew, I was like, oh yeah, security is the thing. And so um, since, you're, since you're on here uh, somewhere, husband, I'll just go ahead and give a quick little shout out because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be standing right here. So thank you. Um, but yeah, so after all this, I went to the, I got this awakening and I had been working in this desktop support position that I had managed to get some exposure to something called vulnerability management. 
Now, at the same time, I had gone back to my local community college and completed the Associate of Science and in Information Security. Now, that's when I first got exposure to even touching firewalls. And this was maybe what, four years ago? So I'm a firewall engineer now. So I went from barely understanding how to plug this box into deploying it for big customers like Oracle and Walmart and like Tesla. <laughs> so um, I went to this training program that had been offered by this company I'd never heard of called Palo Alto Networks. I'm like, what's this place? And it was a free training class for veterans. And at the recommendation from my uh, current mentor, now friend, uh, Matt, I actually ended up getting an interview and getting hired just because I was curious. I wanted to help people. And I was really good at asking questions. It was not my technical skills. It was not that I knew all these cool things from the 90s. Like I could barely print Hello World out of a wet paper bag. So why is this company taking a chance on me? And they told me it was my presence and my confidence that was forged by my personal experiences and my struggles growing up. You know, you have when you have a presence, nine times out of 10, if you meet someone with presence, they've been through some stuff every time. Like there's, there's, there's almost, it's like a, like a hundred, I would say like a hundred percent guarantee. So the main reason I want to share all this with you guys is because this isn't uncommon. That, that's the thing that bugs me is like, that my story is not that uncommon, unfortunately. Too many of us are trapped in situations that the solutions of our parents and grandparents and just go to college and stay out of trouble aren't enough to even break some of these generational cycles of poverty or violence. So we really have to start getting creative and cybersecurity is one of those fields where you can be creative. I mean, the field is so new that a good company, you know, they're, they're hurting for people. So they're going to, they're looking for people that are hungry and have an aptitude, not necessarily that they're hardcore technical. You know, they can train. So in this field, you know, I went from being homeless and now I'm trying to buy my third house in five years. And I'm not, I'm not being facetious about that. Okay. Um, we were lucky enough that my dad was able to do a rent to own on his current house, but you know, it, it was in like a working class neighborhood. It just kind of worked itself out over time. So I've been able to break some major cycles here and as I now come back and I'm teaching at Sacramento City College and I'm teaching the same program that helped me, this is that messaging that I'm constantly telling my students is that it's not just about like what certs or like what degree you have. Like, do you ask questions? Are you naturally curious? Do you try to think creatively to solve problems? Can you talk to people? Like the soft skills in cybersecurity are almost more valuable because the tech can almost always be taught. So as you guys are, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how do we get to our students? How do we help them understand? Get them to tell you what their plans for the future are. And if they don't have any, help them make some. I didn't have an idea what my future looked like until I met um, one of my old coaches in Taekwondo. And he said, oh yeah, well, like you could eventually transfer to like UC Berkeley and maybe you could try to go the collegiate nationals route after community college. I did that. I won it in 2011. But I didn't even think that that was a possibility for anything I could do with myself until I had that person to say, hey, let's set some goals together that I think would be really beneficial or re really realistic for you. So that's all I really have for like the talk track piece. So I just want to kind of open it up to questions and just kind of see, you know, I, I want to hear, hear from you guys. Don't be shy. <laughs> Oh, well, Ashley, this is Valerie. The point you made about uh, soft skills, I try to emphasize that so much um, with, with students today. Uh, but, you know, we're uh, at, at my school district, we're kind of in a culture where um, college is it. You know, that's where you have to go yeah. to be successful and to get to where you are. And I have a difficult time um, uh, communicating to students the value of of your pathway in terms right. of training um, and and really focusing in on, on the soft skills. It's it's apparent that students who come from a similar background, I come from a similar background. I teach in a community with students who have the same background, and the value of uh, their creativity, uh, mm -hmm. their confidence. 
their communication skills are so valuable. And I have a tough time getting them to um, really develop and build on that uh, to, to pursue a, a technical career, any type of career, you know, in, in IT, because they feel, sure. you know, uh, so strongly about college. I got to go to college. I got to learn this. I got to learn right. that. And I'm, you know, undoing all that is very difficult. What's yeah. your, yeah. you know, how do you, how do you approach that? And, and I'm going to go back, of course, and share everything you said, of but course. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to convey that message better. And then also you mentioned uh, tools versus play with the computer, how you got into it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of students are, they're whizzes on video games. Man, it's crazy. You know? <laughs> and, and, but when you, yeah, and how to convert that into an understanding that the computer is not just for play, it's also a tool. Right. So I'll approach that question first, because you're going to laugh at my answer. The way I figured out how the computer works was trying to like modify my video games to do other things that they weren't supposed to do. Um, I actually learned how to get into like bug bounty programs and stuff because I would just literally dump the code and I'd look at it and see like what it did. And I'm like, oh, let me turn on this little bit right here. So I get unlimited lives and I'd load it back up in the game and test it. I'm like, oh, dang, it worked. So literally right there, I'm learning how to like debug and like edit code. Mm -hmm. So that's one method to kind of like, I guess, turn it that way. Um, the, the kids that I worked with in, in Southside Stockton, I mean, every time I talk to them about this stuff, is the moment I start talking about like money, all of a sudden, like everyone's ears perk, <laughs> perk up. I'm telling you, okay. um, like it's, it's crazy because when I explain how I used to work at GameStop making like $8 an hour, and now I work a job where I make over $50 an hour, they're like, wait, what? And then all of a sudden, like, this is a completely different conversation because what's every teenager's motivation? They're trying to get paper, you know, especially some of our, our kids of color, man. They got like this, these dope haircuts, there's like nicer shoes than me. I'm like, where are y'all getting money for this? <laughs> like, I really want to know because like I need some of those J's. So yeah, as soon as I start talking money, that's, and unfortunately that's the motivator right now. But if that's the way to get them to open their ears and listen to you, it's worth it to mention that especially like okay. for me being a middle, a middle of the road millennial, I wish I had just gone straight into it rather than go straight to college because I still have student loan debt. I have other friends that just went straight it mm -hmm. yeah. straight into engineering, man, they're over here. Like, Oh, I'm buying like my sixth house and I just paid off the fifth one and mm -hmm. I'm doing mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh my goodness. So, I mean, and it's, and it's a combo, right? Like I went to college, of course, like I went back and eventually did finish my degree because I knew I'd need that if I wanted to move up later, but getting the foot in the door and getting the job experience. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not a new college grad with no work experience. Mm -hmm. I'm now a new college grad with eight years work experience and all these certifications. And it's just a completely different type of conversation that you get to have. Mm. I actually have a quick question in, in terms of certifications. So here in Paramount, we have a, a fairly new um, computer science pathway. What two or three certifications would you recommend that each student should have by the time that they finish? Each student, I would say, so definitely SEC plus, like that's, that's without question. Um, I would say, do you guys have like additional concentrations within your program? Not like, yet. Like, okay. So if it's just general, I mean, if it's more like an infrastructure or like a coding heavy program, I would say like security plus maybe like the cloud because DevOps is huge right now. And we need tons of people with programming and like scripting knowledge or um, any of like the, uh, what are they called? There's like the like the pen, the pen test series or the CYSA series. There's like a new, like just cybersecurity track now that if you were to couple that with the program, it would be great because it does touch on things like secure coding and some of those other things too, to kind of make students a little bit more well-rounded as far as like the skill set they can demonstrate. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hey, hey Sam. Ash. Hi, thank you. Um, I put one question in the, in the message to you and the follow-up one was, what's the minimum amount of cybersecurity training that you would need, right, to get an entry level kind of position? I work with adult education, right? Okay. And we have a cybersecurity program at one of our school in LA and with LA Unified. And they take networking, then they take cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. 
maybe that's not enough to get an entry level job. I think they get a Cisco security mm -hmm. certification at the end. They take that. But what else would they need, someone need to get a start in the field, would you suggest? Yeah, that's it's it's an interesting kind of thing that we have going on right now because post COVID, we're now seeing this renewed interest in like cloud security. Um, we're seeing a lot more stuff around like, uh, like DLP type situations, because maybe folks have like a home machine that they have to use instead of a work machine. So there's a lot more like going on here just in this last year from COVID. So I would say that definitely add some cloud in there because the cloud security thing is just blowing up right now. <laughs> Um, and then if you can add like an ethical hacking or like an entry level kind of like intro to like pen testing or something like that, just to kind of give them exposure to some of those different domains of InfoSec, because you can also approach this from like a governance risk and compliance. Those people make tons of money. Yeah, governance, risk, and compliance folks make a lot of money. And for those asking for me to use layman's terms, so governance, risk, and compliance are the folks who uh, they make like all the regulation and make sure that like a company's information is set with like policy. Now, policy is not for everyone, but if you've got students that are interested maybe in the combination of like law and cybersecurity, that's perfect because. I will tell, be the first one to tell you, I am not trying to read all those documents in like my eyes are going to start like crying because it's just not going to be good for me. <laughs> but there's a big, big push for GR, G, G, GRC, GCR, however you, whatever, whichever way you want to run the acronym. So. Right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Don't be shy. I promise I'm super approachable. <laughs> So what's the what's the starting salary for an entry level job? Just to continue Ooh. from Sam. Oh boy. Um. So my very first. So the average, like a SOC analyst, is considered like an entry level job. And I know in this area, it can pay anywhere from like seventy thousand up to about ninety five thousand, depending on where you are. Um. I'm a lot above that now, but um. I mean, even just going into like security sales, you're looking at easily clearing six figures consistently, like no problem. And in fact, like for cybersecurity specifically, sales is actually a really fast way into any security vendor because there's always turnover. And even if it's just to get exposure to the industry, and again, I'm not saying you need to stay there, okay? Because sales is not for everyone, but if you wanna get in the door quickly and then pivot with your technical knowledge, Get your foot in the door, do your year, learn about the company, and then you can start applying wherever you want. Like, at least at my company, we have a really good internal mobility policy. Like, I've just interviewed for my fourth job in four years at the company, not because I'm not happy, but because I grow and they want me to try okay. other things and I'm encouraged to do other things. So uh, hopefully that helps answer your question yes, a little bit. Yes, yes, very cool. good. Thank you. Cool. Oh, a SOC analyst. So... You guys have a good, a really big sock actually. So you guys are probably familiar with your desktop support engineers that probably pop out and they're like, oh, let me help you fix your computer. So then they go back to the network engineering team. So they'll like install like your, the little wireless access points you might see in your classroom or like if your internet goes oh, down, yeah. they're the ones who fix that. Now the sock is like this secret, well, it's not really a secret, but it's like this special team. So when we're all on the internet, Everything that we're doing is tracked, it's monitored. There's always threats and stuff out there. A SOC team is like the first line of defense for any company. They sit and they watch logs and they analyze alerts. And part of the reason why it's a great place to get started in security is because you really need more analysis skills than you need mm -hmm. like the technical skills. Mm. So I got in as a SOC analyst with an English degree, believe it or not, <laughs> um, because I had really good analysis skills. So yeah, so that's that's one type of position. So that's like a SOC analyst. There's other stuff too, like a pen tester. Uh, one of my students actually at Sac City um, started off with me a couple of years ago. He just got his offensive security certified security professional certification. And if you guys Google it, it's called the OSCP. He just went from working the help desk to making $90,000 a year as a pen tester. Like he went, he was making, he said he was making like 35,000 and he just got a big, good size raise and like a life-changing wow. amount of money for him. And it was just because he got that very valuable, highly sought after certification. 
Ashley, what I appreciate that you're sharing with us is there's so many different career options mm -hmm. that are out there, positions and so forth. And so, you know, I'm, I'm these acronyms, you, you know what I mean? Oh, are just like, yeah. okay, you'll see, it's E, S, C, T, T. So <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to explain what those are. Absolutely. And, um, and opening our eyes to that, because I think we've all had issues with our computers I don't know the name of the person. It's just, David, you know, that I, yeah. so um, I appreciate that. So yeah, no problem. And I, and I get it too, because I worked in other industries before I worked in tech. And like, if you don't work in it, you don't understand, like, it's hard to understand how it works. It seems like it's this disconnected, like auto magic thing where just like the computer wizards just things just work all of a sudden, right? And I'm sure that's what if, I feel like that half the time. Half the time I'm like, hey husband, like what's this thing doing over here? So yeah, like we, it, the internet feels still like this magical place, but it's really not like there's, there's science behind everything that's done within the IT realm. Now on the flip side, if you have students that maybe aren't interested in technical careers, maybe they just wanna be accountants or they wanna do HR. There's still a place for you in cybersecurity. That's why this industry is so great. Like it doesn't matter what you do, like there's a place for you. There's a really cool lady at my job, her name is Moy. And all she does is she does the marketing and the branding to help promote InfoSec awareness at our company. So she's not a technical person. She just puts together these nice newsletters and helps, you know, promote these security awareness, uh, awareness campaigns and stuff. Sorry, I was trying to read and talk at the same time. That didn't work. Um, so yeah, so she's an, she has an English degree. She, she was a journalism major, you know. Uh, I have a general studies degree, the most I could not pick a major degree out there. And there is a place <laughs> for me in cybersecurity. So, you know, I, I, I want you, I want to caution you guys on letting the degree define what it means to work in cyber mm -hmm. because it doesn't, mm -hmm. it really doesn't. I know someone who's one of our lead engineers with a political science degree. Like if I unblur my background, I've got like a music degree up there too and some other weird stuff, but that those other domains just within academia can help how you, you know, solve problems. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Don't be shy. I do. I, Monica, I have a question for you. Hi, um, how many of these jobs are, or I should, let me rephrase that. Um, uh, I, have, I have quite a few students with varying degrees of immigration status. Okay. And so trying to find them jobs that are contractor based, gig based, sure. 1099, you know, yeah, right. to accommodate their financial goals and needs. How, I, I'm probably more of a percentage wise, how many sure. of these jobs fall in that category? Um, that's an excellent question. I don't know off the top of my head, but what I can tell you is that startups are a great way to go for that reason, because startups are usually trying to get off the ground. Um, they're usually willing to kind of train or let people grow, you know, as you kind of grow with the company. And then they're also more likely to do sponsorship, um, for like the H one B one type stuff, because, of the fact that they're trying, again, they're trying to get off the ground. They'll take whoever they can get to help them get those projects off the ground. So startups aren't a bad way to kind of get started with that um, specifically. As far as everything else, I'm really just not sure off the top of my head. Um, I actually would be interested to see some, uh, some of the stats around that because I wonder if that's now a new barrier for entry for students or just people in general in that situation, so. Yeah, I'll, I'm actually going to do some research on that. I'm going to, that's, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Very rare. I get stumped. <laughs> I like that Sorry. Estella, the powers that be. <laughs> I have uh, some high school students that are currently pursuing like a technical certification on a pathway mm -hmm. uh, through a partnership that I have from my high school class into community college. And I'm just curious about the reality of them um, either while in high school or right after high school, you know, really getting some type of work. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, should, should they start with like an internship or try to pursue an internship while in high school or uh, what's the likelihood that someone who's like 18 is going to get an entry level job, you know, working with uh, maybe a startup or or some company? And then my second question is uh, around the, the United States, uh, is the demand 
more, you know, on the West Coast? Or, you know, can you move around in the U.S. where there's greater demand for mm. cyber, cybersecurity uh, skills? Okay, so I'll answer the first question. So here's what's interesting. So networking is everything, as I'm finding out, which is why every time I do these things, I always offer my LinkedIn, even if it's to students, because even my own students, a couple times, you know, they'll be like, hey, I'm looking for something. And they're like 20, 21, like they're young. And I'm still, you know, even with my, you know, sphere of influence, I'm still blasting their profile out there because I think it's worth it to do that. Um, now, conversely, when I worked in my SOC, I actually did, one of my teammates was 19. So wow. it, it's not unheard of, but it, you know, you do want to manage expectations because unfortunately we're still dealing with some of these barriers in hiring and cybersecurity that managers may think things like, oh, well, you're kind of young. You don't have a lot of experience. Well, I'm young too. And I was new, but I can solve yeah. problems differently and I'm fresh eyes. So um, so that's, that is kind of a challenge. I, I, and I can see that because a lot of our people doing the hiring are not people like us that see the big picture, that yeah. see the potential. So that is kind of a hurdle that can definitely be there. But if they are getting technical certifications, if they're, you know, trying to make their LinkedIn and already trying to have like a professional following, I saw a kid who was like 16, 17, got like his CCNA, CCMP and like something else, like the whole stack in Cisco, uh, which is like uh -huh. the Cisco certified networking associate uh -huh. and all that stuff um, for everyone that's listening, if they don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he had all that stuff. Someone shared his LinkedIn. And then the next day he was like, oh, I got like 14 job offers just because somebody shared my LinkedIn post. Like wow. that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah. people, people are paying attention okay. and, and, and the environment is changing where you know, more managers care about actual talent and, and capability than again, like how old you are. I was the youngest person on my team at Palo Alto Networks, even at like 27 when I started, I was the baby. So yeah, I mean, and if you can market yourself, it's not going to matter anyway. Half the time when I interviewed, when I was really young, I mean, I was in the military, so I was already like way too grown up or whatever. So mm -hmm. they didn't really know I was as young as I was. And then, uh, can you repeat your second question? The second one is the demand for uh, oh, yes. around around the U.S. What areas would, you know, are really hiring? Sure. So I want to. I would argue it's everywhere. Um, I know uh, the state of North Dakota was on the news uh, not too long ago because they did this big like sock of the future thing, and South Dakota obviously doesn't have tons of cyber talent, but you know, you factor in cost of living and everything else, you move somewhere like that, you're making yeah. 85K when it costs like pennies compared to what mm -hmm. we probably pay out here. Mm -hmm. That's, it's a, it's a similar improvement in quality of life. And that's in the flyover states. I mean, Atlanta is popping for tech, let me tell you. Um, DC, popping for tech. I know quite a few students that went to like Howard and some of those, uh, some of the other HBCUs in that area. Mm -hmm. I mean, our company specifically is actively working with HBCUs to try to recruit them. And I know we're not the only tech company. So the demand is absolutely there. And I would say it's international at this point. Wow. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like I had someone like randomly email me from like London or something like, oh, we had this governance risk and compliance position. I'm like, mm, not yet. No, thanks. Don't want to live abroad just yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> so, but yeah, the demand is definitely there. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Now, Ashley, I know we have quite a few high school students. Yeah. I want to hear from some today. of my kiddos. <laughs> yeah. So um, their teacher is with them. Their teachers are with them. So let yeah, speak on up. I did see Juan asked a really good question. Um, what advice would I give to students who cho choose to go into the military, join the Air Force or the Navy? That is the best advice I can give you. My husband and I met in the Army, and, and I see I see Jean cracking up over there. He must know what I'm talking about because he is cracking up. Um, yeah, I joined the Army, and I'm not saying that like I didn't get a lot out of it, but if you want to do like cyber or anything that's going to translate to the civilian sector, you really have to pay attention to like what your job is actually doing. Um, if you join like MP, I mean, it's cool if you get to kick in doors and stuff, but I can guarantee you will not be hired as a cop when you get out of the military, so you might be struggling. Um, but if you do like regular IT, you know, like what I did and like what my husband did, we both have good paying tech jobs now. So 
you know, there's certain careers that definitely translate. And as far as cyber capabilities, the Air Force and the Navy have been at the forefront of this for a very long time. Um, the Air Force's domain is cyberspace. You know, that is one of the domains that they are directly responsible for. So like getting to do things like work for NASA and stuff like that, that's kind of funneled through like the Air Force path. Now, the Navy has this place called the Naval Postgraduate School, and they have a killer master's in cybersecurity program, as well as a PhD, like one of the first ones ever in computer science and cybersecurity. And that's through the military. And if you're in the military, and especially if you do like the officer route after college, um, the Navy will pay for your, doc your doctorate. You know, so I would say Navy Air Force for sure, because they have the most tech jobs. They have the most jobs that translate to civilian careers. And they are the ones that are the not as hard on your body, because I am like almost 33 with the back of a 60 year old. So, yes, Air Force and Navy, if you are really thinking about the military, you'll still get your GI Bill if you go active duty. And the new GI Bill, four years of college with housing paid, is the new GI Bill now. Um, but again, the job you pick when you go in and the branch you pick will impact your quality of life. So stay away from the army and the Marine Corps. I know they have opportunities. If your kids are like, oh, I want to go be a PT stud and, and, and be super buff and super tough, send them on. They're cyber in the army. They're cyber in the Marine Corps. They're just going to have a harder boot camp. But yeah, Air Force, Navy, if you want your students to not necessarily have to uh, get wrapped up into situations or have to deploy a lot, Air Force or the Navy for their technical capabilities, please. <laughs> it really matters. It, re it really does. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, no problem, Juan. Yeah, come on, Roosevelt students. I'm trying to hear from you. <laughs> hey, Ashley, this is uh, Moses Garcia. I had a question for you. Um, to try and help motivate uh, some of our younger kids, even um, junior high level to get mm -hmm. on up. Uh, I know uh, CodeHS, Code.org, they have some really good uh, things for the youngers. Um, what would you suggest for the kids that are just kind of eager, they don't know really know what it is, but it's like, hey, yeah, I could do that. Um, so let me drop a bunch of links on you guys. So there's, there's like a few ways to do this. So um, something I'll kind of put, just give you to put in perspective. So DEF CON is like, the biggest, and I say underground in quotes because everybody knows about it now, is like the biggest underground hacker conference in the world. Even DEF CON has a kids section. So I would say just start, I mean, even if you're just starting with like some serious Googling, there are so many more programs geared towards getting like middle schoolers and high schoolers, one, interested in this field, and two, actually, you know, being safe online so that they can protect themselves. So um, what I did with my younger, younger kids, lots of workshops, lots of interactive fun stuff is actually was a little bit more effective, but obviously with COVID, it's kind of tough. Um, I mean, what kind of stuff do you feel like, what are you using right now? If, if you're using anything. Right now, I, I'm, I'm actually teaching the cybersecurity class at uh, Paramount High School, okay. um, but I, I know um, this is a great program that we have, and I would just love to find out how we can engage the kids at a younger level just so that when they come in, they're a little bit better prepared to see sure. some of the stuff they're seeing. Cause um, I'd talked to Edward and the other group and I'd asked him because we we heavy get into Linux and uh, and Wireshark mm -hmm. in the Project Lead the Wave uh, program. And um, that lost me. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I can imagine what, the, you know, cause I had no experience in this prior to this, you know sure. what I mean? So, um, and if, if the instructors are getting lost, it's like, it makes it even harder for the, yeah, the students to get it. Sure. But, but I just, I'm trying to find that, that way to help them and also help me. It's like, the more we learn, the better we'll get. What I did when I did a workshop for some of the, the old, like the, they were like the younger teenager, like older middle school group. I actually just made everything real for them. So rather than, you know, looking at this from kind of like this theoretical, you know, they're looking at data or packets that don't matter. I was like, okay, open up wire. Cause we did this remotely. I was like, open up Wireshark and see, you know, start sniffing your traffic at home. And they're like, wow. So this is my traffic that I'm seeing go by and all these packets. I'm like, yeah. Do you want to find out more about like what it does and like what kind of stuff is in there? And all of a sudden they're curious about like, oh, well, if you see every packet, like what else can you see? And then all of a sudden it sparks the conversation of like, well, what are the implications of like me being on like steam all day? 
Like, will my parents know if I was just playing video games and not in my COVID classes? Absolutely. With Wireshark, I could figure that out. So, you know, you make it, I always try to make it fun, make it conversational, but like for kids, like you always have to make it applicable to something that they can like apply it to. Cause if you're just like, look at these packets, they're like, I don't understand what that is. But if you say, look at these packets, this is your data right now going by, they're going to be like, oh, well, what is that? What is what's in there? So I always try to steer them in a way to try to ask more questions, but, um, we have a really good program here at Palo Alto Networks called the Cyber Aces program. Um, I know that other companies are doing something similar, but our Cyber Aces program is open to everyone. So um, Dr. Newton, I'll definitely provide you like a whole bunch of free training links from Palo Alto and stuff at the end of this. Um, it's all completely free. Um, and also for our, my teachers on here, um, we do have a cybersecurity academy. We give you free curriculum and labs and stuff. So again, secondary conversation. If anyone's interested, you know, let me know and we can, we can definitely talk shop. Oh, Valerie, I like your question. So recommend books for high school students. Can I recommend books for high school students to read about cybersecurity, both nonfiction and fiction? Man, that's such a loaded question. Cause there's some stuff where you could argue it's like cybersecurity focus. And there's some other stuff where you're like, I don't know, it's more sci-fi. Um, geez, what? I'm trying to think of like kid appropriate too, because a lot of the, mm. <laughs> some of those books are not, mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> like I wouldn't recommend reading those. Um, so we do have something on our website called the Cyber uh, Security Career Guide. And what it is, it's a, it's a book that Palo Alto Networks puts together every year. And it includes um, all kinds of stuff, like just different folks in the company, like what they did a little bit, like a little background on them, their bio. Okay. And it also includes like, you know, how many years in cybersecurity. So like, if they're like looking at someone new or they can say, oh, okay, well, like, what did they do? Or if, you know, you're someone like me, who's been around for like five years, like, oh, well, what have they done at the company? So that also might help provide some light. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm, 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 I'm not getting, nothing's coming to mind about like actual cybersecurity books. That I'll are, follow that are up with you. I got your email. Yeah. So I'll do no that. worries. Thank you. Cool. Um, I think we have a few minutes left. Were there any other questions or comments? And I'll yeah, put this my. Is, this is Mark Sherman. Hi, Mark. Um, let's see. Where would you say the crossroads is between cybersecurity and cryptography? And cryptography everywhere. <laughs> okay, because I got a good book for you on cryptography. Is it is it the Cryptonomicon? No. Okay, because <laughs> that's the only book that comes to mind. <laughs> well, there's Bruce Chenier's handbook. Oh, yeah. I think I have that. Yeah, I'm looking at my shelf. I totally have that. I haven't opened it yet. I should probably read that. <laughs> um, I did just toss my uh, LinkedIn in here. Oh, what a great question. How much of my college or university education did I need to finish? Is an associate's degree fine to start in IT? I want to say yes, because Palo Alto Networks hired my silly self with just an associate's degree and like my security plus cert. So, um, I mean, again, it depends on the hiring manager, depends on the company, but if it's a bigger company, especially a lot of these Silicon Valley companies are actively like waiving their bachelor's degree requirement because they know that a lot of people in this field maybe get an associates and go to work and maybe they don't come back and do that academic, you know, four year bachelor's degree. So more companies are starting to strip off the bachelor's degree requirement, even Palo Alto Networks did because we understand that you know, not everyone went to college and then went straight into this field. We're all like at these varying points and how we got here. And so it's dumb to not to automatically exclude, you know, a bunch of top talent just because they didn't get a bachelor's degree. I mean, education is super expensive in this country. Like that's not an accessible option for everyone, even once you start making money. So yeah, more companies are getting better about that. So I would argue, yes, you can totally get your foot in the door with an associate's degree. And Ashley, we have about four minutes left for this breakout session, and then we're going to open it up to our panel discussion, cool. uh, Q&A. So for everyone on the call, be sure if you haven't had an opportunity to have your question answered, put it in the chat, and we're going to make sure that that is uh, shared uh, during the Q&A in just a moment. Awesome. Um, any other questions? 
Do any of the students want to know what video games I'm currently playing? I'm just curious. <laughs> Ashley, where were you going to have the links by chance? Oh, I just uh, threw one in the Zoom, but I think what I'll do is I'll get like a nice list for you guys and I'll just put them and send them to Dr. Newton so she can disperse those out. Great, thank you. And Larry apparently wants to know what I'm playing right now. Well, I did just get an Oculus Quest 2 and Beat Saber is my new favorite game. So best thing ever. And my husband just reminded me via text that we are going to play Beat Saber later. So if you need to find me, that's where I'll be. Uh, but uh, I grew up playing like Nintendo. VR is totally worth it. Like... As a millennial, VR is like the pinnacle of video gaming because we had the virtual boy. We had like these other terrible attempts at headsets and the Oculus is like the first one to get it right. And it's a standalone rig. So like we can take it anywhere. We don't need a computer. We can just hook it up and start playing. It's great. So yes, get a VR headset. You, it will change your life. <laughs> I'm struggling with the latest update to Facebook. And you're talking about all of these... <laughs> amazing <laughs> we did i did get my mother-in-law and my and my my stepfather-in-law to play it and they're they're they loved it <laughs> so they actually bought one <laughs> so it's really cool wow great well i tell you what i'm gonna do ashley if there again um any questions um that may be there for uh ashley uh to please put them in the chat and for all of our presenters and when we bring them back together which will happen in just a few moments then we're going to uh continue the conversation so um if you need to take a quick break right now to go grab some water stand up stretch your legs uh and then we'll resume in just a few ashley thank you so much for an outstanding of course session. thanks Out for having me <laughs> great information Mm -hmm. And um, FYI, we've got some middle schools uh, on the line as well um, in high school, and I'm hearing from teachers, I know we've got some administrators and counselors as well, so we just have a breadth of, um, of, of, of inquisitive uh, questions and knowledge that are there, so we want to acknowledge that. So again, thank you, Ashley. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, everyone. And everyone will be here in just a second. Great. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about things, everyone. <laughs> okay. And I believe, is everyone back? Mohammed is here. All right, yes. Mohammed is here. Edward, is here, here with your team? Hell, hell, the gang's all here. Do, we, do you yeah. have to accept my team back or they will automatically be part of the main main room? Well, they'll come, they'll be right, they're coming right now. Okay, okay. We're okay. here. They're here. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, I don't want to leave anybody there. Okay, all right, we're good. All right, let me continue to share my screen then, if you will, and um, so that we can jump right into our next session, and that is the panel discussion. So now here is our, 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 our panel, Ashley Richardson uh, in the main room, uh, Mohammed Mohammar, uh, who was in another section, and then Edward Dean O'Donnell are here. So Dr. Ann Welsh Treglia, she is another CTE coordinator uh, in the office, and she's gonna be monitoring the chat with questions and comments and so forth. So, um, uh, Dr. Treglia, if you will let us know, how can we start off? And as you yes. look at that, mm -hmm, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Newton. I am looking at a question uh, of a participant who was uh, not able, something went wrong with the internet, and she's wondering if she could get the course that Room 3 teaches. Oh, okay. So Room 3 is going to be Edward Dean O'Donnell. Talk to us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, you sure can. And, and the, if you go to uh, Charter Oak Unified School District net and go to the adult education uh, section, um, we do have a class starting on the 19th, of uh, which is Monday, and you still can enroll in it. Um, the class is very affordable. Uh, I believe it's $300. So that includes your, uh, that includes your, your uh, 
your test. Uh, it includes the books and it includes uh, uh, online uh, lab session. And I would love to have anybody join. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, would you be so kind as to let me know that website once more? I'm letting her know directly in the chat. Yes, I'm sorry. So it'd be Charter Oak Unified School District.net, or I believe you could just go to C O U S D. Edward, Edward, why don't you just put in the chat for her? You know what? Why don't I do that? That's a good idea. <laughs> 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 she will just copy and paste. Yes. Here we go. All right. Thank you for that. And uh, and what other questions do we have? Comments. And feel free, everybody, put them on in there. Let's keep this conversation going. We've got some. We've had some some. And in fact, and do you have another one there that's showing? Before I take a pause. Um, I am looking through, let's see, lots of thank yous, great presentation, Ashley, Mr. Dodonnell, and of course, of course, Mr. Mohomar. Um, well, I tell you what, while you look at that, let me start with you, Mohammed. Yes. What were some of the insights that came from your um, session there that you like to share with the whole uh, audience? I think Cecil liked the fact that I laid out um, like a career, like an option for an option, for, a career option for students coming from high school. I think uh, Dr. Lewis also mentioned that they liked the fact that I, I personally, if I, I would advise my nephew coming out of high school right now, like right now with the dynamics of the market with what's going on in the world, whether it's in the US or anywhere else. If I have to advise my nephew uh, about what career path to take, I will orient him or her, my niece, to go through a certification oriented career first. Get A plus, Come TIA plus Computer Technology Industry Association. Get A plus. Get Network plus. Get Security plus. Those three are very achievable. A student from high school with the correct for uh, with the correct edu uh, like material can get those three certification and can land a job that can pay a minimum sixty thousand dollar a year. Entry level. My daughter is, you all can't see her, but she's sitting on the couch just over here. <laughs> I hope she, I hope she's listening to me. I know she's listening and she's okay. not mom is, so. Okay, we're gonna so have a you can do that, get certified. And now when you, when you, and then you land a job. When you have those three certifications, you're gonna have interviews for sure. Mm. You're gonna have a seat on the table. Now, having the job, having the job, that's something else, but you're gonna have, the interviews, at some point, you're going to land a job. And that can be okay. a, a security analyst that we're talking about here. Because you have A+, plus, you know, software, hardware, network plus, you know, all the network fundamentals, and you have the security to cap it off. So with that security, you can land a security analyst job. You can land a network technician job, a NOC network operation center operator, a, a, so many other career opportunities. And that can pay, um, like, I would say you can get like forty-five, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, depending where, which market you're in, in, in New York, Jersey area, or Cali I don't know about California, uh, the market here. around there. <laughs> it's no, wild because I, I, I know this because I have students <laughs> who've done it. I have students who've done it that I guided through, that I, I helped them get certified. And now they're, they're making like $60,000 a year. And when you get that, you secure that job by your discipline, by showing up every day uh, on time, by not missing a day, by doing the project they're assigned to you. Within a year or two, you, you, you become, in, you make yourself indispensable to that company and now because you have a secure job you know your job you can you can go to college part-time 
and you get whatever degree you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. now, and and, sure. and, and if you do that at 19, if you start that at 19, 20 years old, by the time you're 30, you have a career. Right. Now, the certs that you were just talking about, thank you, Ashley, for putting those in the chat. So everyone, you can see those. A plus, network plus, security plus. Yes. Com TIA. Com TIA. TIA. Edward, Edward, uh, is talk Edward probably can uh, add a little bit more to what I say. All right, Edward, add a little bit more to that. All righty, I will. Uh, and actually, you did a great uh, presentation. I don't know that I could beat that, but or even come close to it. Good job. Thank you. Um, but yeah, in, in LA County, Orange County, um, you're, you are looking about a little bit more than 60,000. I would say starting about 80, 89,000. Mm -hmm. You, see, you see, that's out. even better. Yes. Um, but I cannot reiterate enough. Uh, and I'm going to go off what Mohammed said. It is very important that we get your security plus. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that you get your A plus and your network plus or your CCNA one at minimum to to go into this industry. And uh, if you don't, you're just cheating yourself um, because you're not going to understand. You're not going to understand. And I, I say this with hesitation because uh, I've, I've taught kids that has came into my class without having any other certifications, but they are very computer smart. So if you, if you grew up with a parent that's in computers and stuff like that, you put them together, you understand policies, and then you're fine. But, but really following his path is a very important uh, structure to take. And I can't say that enough. And, and to, to just to finish, these kids are really smart. These kids are smarter than all of us in this in this group. <laughs> yeah, they, can multi, they can multitask. I, my, me, I, I, I'm a, my 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 problem is I cannot multitask. And when I see someone that can multitask, whether it's a woman, kids, today teenagers, I appreciate them so much. I'm like, you're skilled. You have something that I don't have. Yeah. Well, if nowadays if you multitask. If you can multitask like that, they call it, uh, I don't know, some disease. Task switching. It's technically <laughs> not, it's supposed to not be like a, I, I just got told this the other day because they're like, you're such a good multitasker. And I was like, well, I took this professional development course and multitasking is actually bad. So I as can long focus as, on As long as you get everything thing. done, we're good. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I have the problem with multitasking. So they're trying to say I have ADHD. Okay. <laughs> So I mean, no, I no, no, no. I've been trained. I've been trained to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, can I just add one more thing about the CompTIA certs that I, I don't know if mm -hmm. everyone knows? Mm -hmm. um, so CompTIA is doing this new thing called stackable certifications. And I know this because I have a bunch of stackable certifications because I did the entire stack. So I did AN, Security Plus, CYSA, Pentest Plus, all the way through CASP. It was ridiculous. Like I did it in like four years. And um, so I've got both the infrastructure pathway and then I've got the, um, all the way through like the security analytics, like expert pathway that they just give you as a free cert on top of it. So it just makes yes. you look even better. Yes. So just something Very to- good. Yeah, something to point out. <laughs> hey, so, so break, this, break this down for us. For those of us who don't speak that one, language. Yes. One, one last thing. you ha They have to do this. LPI? Linux. Yes, That's God. Linux. Yes, <laughs> okay, yes. So I keep forgetting about. this. I forget Linux. this one. If you're going to be a hacker, if you're going to be cybersecurity, you have to know Linux. And why I'm, is that? I'm part, of, I'm, I'm part of the Linux Professional Institute. That's what LPI means. So, so okay, why do we so, need to know Linux? Well, and that's good to know because I've had some students ask me in, in this uh, um, breakout section of where they would uh, could get their Linux uh, education. And, and maybe oh, you could speak man. on that, Mohammed. Why you okay. didn't, why, why those are not in my class, in my room? <laughs> they should all okay, come so to Muhammad, me. Okay, wait, wait, okay, put a, put a little pin right there. What um, is Linux? What does it mean? Okay. What does it look like? I love this question because <laughs> that's my heart right here. All right, Linux, good, good, good. Linux is the Linux is the first operating system created in the world. Yep. Linux was created in 1969 by Bell's by AT and T by Bell's laboratory owned by AT and T. Not not Linux, but the granddaddy of Linux, Unix. 
was called Unix. So Unix was the first operating system created uh, uh, in 1969 by Bell's lab um, due to some legal glitches. Um, AT&T starts selling the, oh, all right, AT&T starts selling the operating system to the, to the US government. The first client was the US government. And some major business organizations, major businesses in the US. So they bought a lot of them. Um, first, it was a project. It was not meant to be sold. And they start selling it. And the engineers who built it are like, you got to pay us money. Like, all right, so I want to make sure you understand the landscape. Do I have time? Um, I don't want to abuse your time because this is interesting. This is my passion. I can, I can, I can tell you the story in 15 minutes. Oh, okay. How about we do it in like a minute? A minute? It's impossible. It's impossible. It's just for the sake of time. In a minute, in a minute. All right. Mac is based on Linux. Mm -hmm. Google is based on Linux. Amazon is based on Linux. Your Chromebooks. You yeah, not even that. AWS. Mm -hmm. AWS is based on the Apache project. So you cannot go on Google, you cannot go on Facebook or even Microsoft without running into Linux. Mm -hmm. Linux is everywhere. Your smart TV, your car navigation system, your, your phone, whether it's iPhone or Samsung, your, everything is Linux. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's not called Linux, and that, that's what makes it great. And it's a it's a, a a program, and I'm speaking from it's open source. It's an operating system. Operating system. So think it's like an operating Win system. Think like Windows. So everyone knows Windows, right? Like yeah. Windows has most of the market share. You've got Mac, which is like what uh, Muhammad is saying. It's like a flavor of that operating system. And then you have just standard Linux, which has mm -hmm. all these little open source, which means like anyone can edit the code and stuff on them to design them however you want. It's just another version of like a desktop operating system is the easy yeah. way to understand it. But so it's Mahat, open source. You don't pay yeah. for so it. Where can we way, get training? Where uh, can we get training for this? Where uh, can we get trained uh, for yeah. that? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, uh, say something to Gina. Gina, okay. I'll, I'll answer your question in a minute. Gina, uh, <laughs> Mac, the Mac that people praise now, Steve Job and Steve Wozniak, they use the Berkeley University version, the BSD version of Unix, to create the Mac, mm -hmm. just so you know, because the Mac is exactly Linux. The command, the Mac terminal is the Linux terminal, command line only. Now, where can you get the education? I personally offer, I'm LPI, so I'm part of the Linux, per, uh, I'm gonna advertise for myself, right? Is that okay, Gina? Uh, go ahead, shameless. I'm, I'm LPI, Linux Professional Institute. I provide Linux classes, mm -hmm to anyone who went online with the great material. Uh, if you wanna get the certification after, I get you the, the material to study to get the certification. Mm -hmm. okay. otherwise, then, otherwise you have to join a program like uh, Edwards program, um, uh, Charter Oak or some other platform, CompTIA or some other platforms to get certified. But I personally give, I, get, I have classes for uh, Linux. Thank you, Mohammed. And then Edward, you were going to say something, and then Anne, I'm going to give it back to you. Yeah, he answered what I was asking. What I wanted to just know is where uh, I had a lot of questions about where they can obtain this training uh, for Linux, and he answered that. I put thank some you. links in the chat for you as well. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. I see that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that, Ashley. And everyone sees that over there um, in the chat there. Ashley's been diligent about putting in links. Um, in regards to the conversation that we're having. Thank so, you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. And what do we have? Lots of thank yous for posting the information for the training. Um, thank yous to uh, you, Mohammed, for uh, making sure that everyone understood those basic classes or programs that students need to take in order to get an entry level career going. Um, and there's one more, let's see here. Can you put a link for that? I think that the link was put into the chat, 
but if there's anyone out there who still <coughs> needs to have a question answered, please put it in the chat now and I'll make sure we get to it. Thank you. Great, thank you. So, you know, again, we're doing all this, we're having this conversation. This, this is in regards to how we can move our students, how we can introduce them to these new careers. And, and once we've introduced them, which our panelists are doing a great job with, is now how can we move them forward? So we've been talking about um, the different certifications that they need and so forth. So let's hear from our high school students um, that are with us, from their teachers. Yes. What questions do you have? What, how can these, these wonderful folks here answer some of these questions that you have? And every question is a valid question. Keep that in mind. Every question is a valid question. So please share that out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing over here at Zhang. He, uh, he put a message that uh, his juniors will have full access to these certifications mentioned and have a great senior year. So of course I had to ask if I could come back to high school with him too, because man, that sounds super <laughs> awesome. Like there was nothing like this in high school. We barely had a computer right. in the library. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So come on, high schoolers. Yeah. Come on, unmute yourself and talk. That, that's my, that's the time that I was looking for. Talk to the kids. Come on, young leaders. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Don't be shy. There is no stupid question. Ask anything you want. Don't be ask shy. Ask what our favorite color is. I mean, ask us something. <laughs> yeah. Mine's purple, by the way. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> Mine is, mine is Linux. Linux, Linux is, is <laughs> the Linux. penguin. Mine is the penguin. <laughs> um, Mohammed, could you share uh, with the students that are here um, your conversation about work ethic or any of you guys, if you could share that with the students, oh, I yes. think that would be very, very useful. Um, oh, that was, that's Dr. That, that Lewis, right? I can, yes, I can take, yeah, I, so work, work, work ethic, man. I mean, where to start? This is, I mean, cybersecurity doesn't sleep. This is one of the few industries that I think that there really is like a 24 hour cycle to being in this field. And a lot of these different things that you'll be exposed to in this career path, they're tough. I mean, we just had the solar storm breach and I was on part of one of the SWAT teams that was helping our customers deal with it. If they were impacted, we were up for like two days trying to deal with that, but that's very obviously much later in your career. But I can tell you like to even get the foot in the door, it's because exactly what Muhammad said, I was hustling. I was asking questions. I was, I was curious. I was trying to learn. I was always trying to help. Like they're like, okay, we need someone to pick up this piece, this pencil off the ground. I got it. Like I'm there, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Where, what am I doing with this pencil? Like that was totally me. Mm -hmm. And being just like ravenous like that, if I were a manager, I mean, they probably will never make me a manager because I'll just be hiring like all these crazy people. But I know if I were a manager, <laughs> that's something I would be looking for. It's just like, I want to hear about how much you hustle. You know, and, and even in this particular situation for a lot of, you know, students of color, like that looks a lot of different ways. And so some of that aptitude may manifest itself in ways you didn't think about before. So that's just something to consider. Like everything you do is valid. You know, if you hustle by getting up every morning and having to study for two hours and then you go to school and you're in all these clubs and you're doing all these different things. And then you come home and you watch your younger siblings and you're helping around the house. I want to hear about that. That is exactly that type of hustle that is being looked at in these career fields. So Amen. don't discount that. Like whatever you do, do not discount all of the external stuff that you do that might necessarily may seem like it's not related to what you're trying to do because all of it matters. All of it. That's all I got. <laughs> good, good talk. Good talk. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. So what, what Dr. Lewis was referring to, because I was describing the, the, uh, the skills that are needed to become a cybersecurity analyst, to become uh, an ethical hacker, right? Yeah. There are technical skills and non-technical skills. So the technical skills could include uh, in-depth knowledge of the major operating systems, like the three of them, right? A uh, uh, Windows, 
Microsoft, right? Windows, 90% of the computers in the world are Windows. Apple is like 80, uh, 8%. Uh, Linux is probably 1.5 1, 1. to 2%. So you need to know those three. Um, In-depth knowledge of networking concept. That's why we were advising to get A plus and network plus. So in-depth knowledge of networking concepts, uh, technologies related to hardware and software. You have to know those. Um, you don't have to be a computer expert, but you have to know, you have to have some knowledge about the security areas and the related issues. And that's security plus. The flaws, the vulnerabilities, the open ports, you need to know all of that because you're going to do a lot of scanning, Wireshark and map and all that crap. Now, the non-technical skills are probably the hardest ones because the technical skills, you can learn them. You can learn them, you can practice, you can get a book and read and get them. The non-technical skills are the hardest part for me. And what do you mean by that? What are those? All right, skills? good. The ability to learn and adapt to new technologies quickly. Those kids, they already have that. Mm -hmm. That not an issue for them. They can multitask, they can pick up whatever new technology. This guy's transition from what, from Facebook to Twitter, to Instagram, to Snapchat, to TikTok, they know how to adapt to new technology. So they have that. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is this, strong work ethic. That is important. That's what Dr. Lewis wanted me to, uh, to mention, uh, strong work ethic mm -hmm. and good problem solving and communication skills. I have that, a question for you, uh, Mohammed. just about that. You just, I guess you were reading my mind. Um, we're hearing from our business advisors that soft skills are the most important factors exactly, that they're exactly. looking for, that our young students out of college are not coming into the workplace with. The ones about, who do have those soft skills are getting the offers. Exactly. So, uh, the, reason, the reason they're asking you is this. Let me tell you this. You take the, the, an engineer is probably the, the most technical person in the world. Like you can take any engineer in his field or her field, they're, they're very technical. But how much percent do you, have, do you think an, uh, an engineer needs in order to be successful? How much percent of his technical skills or her technical skills is needed in order to be successful? Tell me. I'm thinking from what you're saying, it's going to be a small percentage. A very small, 15%. Mm. The right answer is 15%. What, are, what about the other 85%? Communication skills, work ethic, problem solving. How do you, if you invent something, right? You invent something. If you're the only no, you're the only one who know your invention, no one is going to benefit from it. You have to be able to communicate it to the world. You have to get an RFC, a request for comment to publish, to show why the world, why humanity, why the community needs your invention. You gotta put that all in communication, in writing. The, so the invention alone is not enough. That's why these communication skills are important. That's why the work ethic, I, I tell my students all the time, look, you can land in a job but can you keep the job? Mm -hmm. What make you keep the job? Your work ethic. You show up on time. You're not late. You don't leave early. You do what the, uh, Ashley will say, even if they need you to pick up a pencil, <laughs> pick it up. Don't say it's not my job. Mm -hmm. When they see that work ethic, that's what will make you move. That what will help you go forward. That's don't all. Be, huh? Go ahead. That's awesome. That's awesome. That that is so so very true. So let me let me let me. Um, to, to, to one 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 more thing that is very important for me: mm -hmm. awareness of local laws and standards. Mm -hmm. I don't want our young kids to go break the law. Mm -hmm. You have to know the local laws when it comes to security. When it comes to data, mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. is very broad. It's not just the technical stuff that we're talking about. It's also the regulations, HIPAA, uh, you know, 
uh, 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 PCI DSS. There's so, there's so many laws that need to be, so many regulations that need to be known to be respected in order to become a good uh, security analyst. And those are the type of things that will come for the students on the call listening to this. When you get that first job and you start doing your training, and when you get your uh, your um, your human resources um, uh, initiation or what have you, when you go through that process, those are the type of things that you'll um, be uh, privy to, and to be very very mindful of those. Absolutely. So let me switch gears here. We have a few more minutes. Ashley, I want to go to you, uh, and I just want you tell us. <laughs> day in the life hmm. what does a day in the life look like so for me right now um it's actually quite flexible so one of those secret benefits at working at like a really forward-thinking company is that i've been work from home since 2018 so when covid made that switch i was like oh it's just monday like i don't understand like why everyone's making a big deal about this but then obviously i know why because it's it was tough for some industries to make that switch so abruptly but yeah so i wake up and i'm not even lying i wake up at like nine in the morning <laughs> and uh i usually like hit a couple of meetings from like nine to eleven and it could be anywhere from like customer calls to like scoping calls Maybe I'm meeting with like a research and development team. Maybe it's just like an internal team meeting where we're trying to discuss different strategies. But since we have this sales technical focus, we're always supporting a sales rep. So best of both worlds, I don't have to do any sales, but I get commission like I'm in sales. Man, that's the best kept secret I never knew about. Um, and, anyway, and, like- and just, oh, just to pause there, sure. explain what a commission is. So in sales, usually, um, like if you sell something, you get a piece of it. And that's usually like the commission that you would get a piece of. So for me, I get a really nice, like just flat rate salary. So even if I didn't sell a single thing, I'm still making a very competitive wage. And then all the commissions are just like a bonus on top. So like I made like a ridiculous amount of money last year. And it was the most amount of money I'd ever made in my life. And I did not know what to do. I think the first thing I did was go out and get an accountant because I definitely was not in a family that grew up with management. So didn't know what to do. Um, anyway, um, so, you know, after like, I usually have like a lunch break. Like, I'm not even kidding when it's at the end of the quarter because there's nothing for me to do. Like, I just sit here and play switch, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I mean, it could be anything from technical, it could be sales, it could be troubleshooting, it could be, oh gosh, like we had another solar storm, we need to all get on a big like worldwide call and talk about the strategy. So it's a good mix of everything, but I think my favorite part about it is that I am encouraged to do research on not only our products, but just cybersecurity. So I spend a large chunk of my day actually getting to just sit in my home lab and just build all these different use cases and demos. And I've got like a little virtual machine, like a virtual computer. And I tried to throw like viruses and stuff on it to see what would happen because the products that I'm responsible for protect against that stuff. So now I'm getting to see both the attacker side and the defender side for these products. And it's making me a lot more well-rounded in, in how I view cybersecurity. Um, on, so uh, before COVID, I actually traveled a lot. So I could get sent, um, when I was on global accounts, I could get sent across the world or I could get sent up the state or across the country or an hour away, it, it didn't matter. So I got to go a lot of different places. Um, Palo Alto Network sent me to Canada three times in six months. So again, there's just so much like cool stuff. It could be so dynamic. Um, I'm actually interviewing right now for other positions at Palo Alto because I'm trying to move into information security proper. But from this particular position, because I'm a specialist already, I have three managers inside the company right now trying to get me on their team because I specialize so quickly and I specialize so effectively just doing my day-to-day -day job that now I have more options. Um, no, I actually don't get frustrated training the technical salesperson, um, mainly because my sales rep does all that sales stuff that I don't want to do. And so I am happy to help them with the technical stuff that they don't want to do, if we're being completely honest. Well, thank you. And one of the things that you mentioned during your presentation is that don't let your academic degree, don't let your academic restrict you into mm -hmm. a position because, you know, with cybersecurity, 
there's so many different ways that it's you can crazy. go. So many different things that you bring to the table that are adaptable to these different positions. So thank you for sharing that. No and one other thing, to the young folks that are listening on this call, did you hear what Ashley said in regards to traveling globally? One of the things that you need to get if you haven't gotten already is a what? I, I didn't hear the, the start of the question. Is that one for is, me? One of those, this is for the passport. That's is it. that for me or Ashley? No, 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 no. That was just for, for, for just a, a, a rhetorical question almost, but absolutely to fill in the blank. Get that passport. So let me close this particular session. Edward, I'm going to come to you and just ask for some final thoughts as we wrap this up and I share closing remarks. Uh, thank you. And, and actually, Ashley, if you guys are hiring, let me know there. That's Always. Sounds like we're a dream. Blowing, we're, blow, <laughs> we're blowing up. If you're interested, come talk to me. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I'm a, a VP of information technology and I work for one of the biggest food suppliers in the United States and Canada. And uh, I'm always looking for, uh, for good working uh, people, both people that has uh, uh, a degree um, along with the, the background, the knowledge, the, uh, what I really look for is, is somebody that has uh, common sense. Uh, common sense is very big to me and uh, a lot of people uh, nevertheless so that's what i look for and we my security team spends a lot of time uh pen testing making mm -hmm. sure we don't have holes in our environment uh, uh checking because i'll tell you that the last thing i want to do is find one before them and they know this yeah <laughs> um if there's a hole, I want to know before anybody else knows. Now, I, that's not always possible. And, and I've had situations where we have had uh, a hack. And, and let just to let you guys know, it will happen to you. And, and I know when it does happen, it feels like the end of the world just hit because that's your job is to prevent it. But there's new things coming out every day. You, you can't prevent everything. So just know, don't get discouraged. It's a great job. I think you guys are in a great position to take advantage of what's going on. We're finally starting to see money come back into the information technology mm -hmm. and this environment. Please jump on it. You'll be happy. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You so ladies and gentlemen, let's give a virtual round of applause to our guests today. We have Ashley Richardson, we have Mohammed Mohammar, and Edward Dean O'Donnell. Thank you all so much for being here and sharing your, your words, your wisdom, uh, your expertise. We are going to make sure that everyone on this call receives not only the PowerPoint, the links, your information, your uh, email addresses and so forth so that they can reach out. And I thank you for being another added resource and value added resource that we can add to our repertoire uh, for our students. Um, Let's do this again. Before, Let's do it, again. do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, before we leave, I have to take a moment to um, just thank you, uh, Dr. Newton and Dr. Welsh uh, Tegelia for everything you've done and making this happen. Uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes and unfortunately, um, Sylvia couldn't be here today, but the, the work that has gone to make this happen and the information that we all got to receive to you ladies, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Round of applause to you. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm gonna leave you here on this awesome Friday with some resources, um, additional resources for you. Here on the screen, you see them. And again, these will be sent to you. Um, and these are uh, employment, these are internship, these are programs for our students. These first few bullets here are all about cybersecurity, all about technology, all about making sure that we are reaching out to students and providing them with opportunities that perhaps they didn't even know about or they weren't exposed to, or they had no idea that they even knew that they wanted to do this, but now they're like, oh my gosh, yes, this is for me. Gina. Uh, yes, sir. If any of your students wants to use me as a reference, a job reference, feel free to give them my information. That is awesome. I volunteer that, I will respect that. If an employer call for anyone, I'll, I'll pick up the call, I'll tell them something. That's wonderful. Everybody right. use it because we all at some point, sometime in our lives need a reference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that, Mohammed. Mm -hmm.
Here are some other um, uh, resources for you as well. Uh, Marion Colson, for those of you who are familiar with the uh, LA Metro PCAP program, and Michael Thomas, who has a wealth of resources as far as jobs for our students. Um, many of them have two requirements, and that is that they live in the city or the county of LA or, and or that they're low income. So when we reach out to our students, um, LA County, this is definitely someone um, that we want to uh, refer them to. And then Shirley Coates has an organization called the Society of Extraordinary Women. And what she's done is that she reaches back into the community and works with our middle school and our high school females to help them move into these areas of STEM um, and get them moving forward. I wanna leave you with this reflection question. And this is something that you can take with you. You can leave it in the chat. And then, uh, Anne, I'm going to ask you just to read some of them off. But this is it. You know, it's one thing to talk about all of this. It's another thing to do this. And you've heard that saying, you know, don't just talk about it or, you know, but be about it. And so that's what we want to do. So I want to ask this question here. What is the key takeaway from this workshop that you'll put into action? What is the key takeaway that resounded with you that you're gonna go back, come Monday morning, come when you get off of this, this call here over the weekend, you're processing it, that you're gonna take with you and you're gonna put into action. I want you to think about that. I'm thinking about it as well. I know our presenters are thinking about it, our whole uh, educational family here. And to the students as well, what are you gonna do with this information? You have a wealth of supporters around you. We're here, your teachers are here, your counselors. You just got a free reference <laughs> from Mohammed. So take advantage of all of this and use us to help you. That's why we're here. So on that note, I'm seeing some things here in the chat. Anne, would you share some of these with us? Yes, uh, let's see here. They are funny, 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 some of them. Um, we have um, lots of thank yous. And then to answer to that question, let's see, meet with principal to, ah, I lost it. Um, as a teacher, be the voice in school when it comes to an alternative path to career and success. This field can yield amazing opportunities that will change lives. I develop a cybersecurity program at Linwood Adult School. And let's see here. Um, I see Estella, one Stella, let's talk. <laughs> Seriously, because I've actually been trying to push a separate initiative to get more involvement in the adult school space because we've been really focused on university and community college for our cybersecurity academy. So I've been like, the only one like, what about career technical education at adult school? That's actually a very common, but under like addressed pathway yes. for a lot of students. Estella's over here like, yes, go. <laughs> um, yeah. Estella would like to know how to develop and implement a cybersecurity training program at her adult school. And Ashley, thank you for reaching out to um, her for that information. And as a former adult school principal, that is so desperately needed. Yes, so, absolutely. Um, be the voice in school when it comes to an alternative path to career and success. Uh, this field can yield amazing opportunities that will change lives. I develop a cybersecurity. Oops, I read that one. <laughs> Linwood Adult School. Go Linwood Adult School. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and thank you for thank you yeah. for sharing those. And again, so this we do have one more from Valerie Felix that touches my heart. When being a school administration, it says, "Meet with my principal to make mm -hmm. more certifications available to students online." Here, here, Val. Yeah, I like that one. I think we all agree with that, and I'm and I'm glad to know, Edward. I'm going to. This is my challenge, my CTE challenge. Uh, Edward, uh, Mohammed. Yes. Ashley, you and I have already talked. We will continue this conversation. Listen, uh, Gina, I need I need two hours with only the students, not you guys, just the students. <laughs> I need I need two hours of those students, man. Bring them to me. Oh man, I, I have so much thing to tell them, so much good stuff to tell them, so much inspiration that I think can help. Wonderful. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to be part of this program, man. Thank it, it, you. It, it, 
And again, we appreciate you coming over all the way from New Jersey, from the East Coast. Yes, yes. This, this is our CTE team. None of this would be possible without all of us working together. And so I just want to give a special <laughs> shout out to our CTE team. And on this lovely Friday, it's beautiful outside. I hope it is where you are as well. <laughs> Thank you. So Muhammad's laughing because it's like because rain. it's it's raining outside. It's 50, 52 degrees and it's running, raining, raining. And you talk about a beautiful day. <laughs> well, we <laughs> get to winter, day. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Have a wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for your time. Dr. Thank Nunes, you. Um, did you say yeah. you were going to make the uh, recording available? Because I would like to share that portion of the panel with my students. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we're Thank sitting you. out. Hi, Valerie. Hi. You didn't say anything. You've been yes, quiet. Yes, I did. She I was have, talking? Yes, I have in the chat window. Yes, oh, she was man. talking. She was talking to my session, Muhammad. Yes, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you didn't talk to my session. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. And in answer to your question, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. So I just want to give a special uh, thank you to those who are still on the call. Dr. Francois from Paramount Unified, thank you so much for being here. Hector, and I see, and I'm going to stop here so that we can see faces. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Please and connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm oh. really active on LinkedIn, and I love to share resources and stuff so there, too. I am not on social media. Don't try and find me. But I do have, <laughs> I, am, I am on LinkedIn. That's it. That's my only social media is LinkedIn. That's it. Okay. Ashley, that's good. Yeah, Ashley, that's we'll all I talk. Have. We'll talk. Yeah, yeah. Oh I already found you. I already added you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great connection tool too. So we see everyone on the call here. Reach out. Let's let's get connected. So absolutely, we can share absolutely. Thank you, Gina. Thank you for making this happen, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Now to Muhammad and to uh, Reina and to our team here. Please remain on the line because mm. we're going to do a, a debrief. But mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you to Lenny. I'll, I'll be right back one second. Okay. All right. All right. Elbert, thank you. Cecil, Cecil, you're always with us. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Elbert, uh, let's see, Linda Choi from Spain. I think it's about 10 o'clock there now, if not later. So thank you. So 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Wow. <laughs> you are a trooper. 1 a.m. My thank goodness. You so thank much. you so much. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yes. Terrific. Have a okay. lovely weekend, all of you. Thank Thanks. you. You as well. You as well. Thank you. Bye bye. Gracias. 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 Thank you. Gracias. Buen fin de semana. también. Gracias. Sam Powers, thank you for being here. Anna, thank you for being thank here you. today. All of you guys. Yes, yes. Lenny, thank you. Oh, I just want you to know too, real quick, I already have started reaching out to the IND representation at Palo Alto Networks because my first question was, are we, do we have outreach to adult ed or CTE programs? And she was like, you know what? We don't. And I'm like, a lot of people of color come in that route, like yeah. to this field. And so our academies team, while they are awesome and they've done an amazing job at focusing on our two and four-year schools, I keep bringing this up. I'm like, there are other, like, what about just straight career technical training programs? Because there are just some folks that that is their only option to get exposure to that. So I am more than happy to go ahead and keep fighting this fight within my own company because this matters to me because there are not enough people that look like me at my office. Okay? <laughs> that's a great point, Ashley. That's appreciate a great point. I appreciate that reach out. And that's how it starts. You know, we got to yep. talk about it. We got to be about it. And we got to make action happen. So I'm just, I said I was excited about this day at the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. I'm extra excited now mm -hmm. um, as we're bringing it to a close. So um, yes. Yes, so we've got, uh, it's four o'clock, so I want to be respectful of our participants' time. Or, so I want to just give you an official thank you again for being here and uh, look forward to our next, our next webinar. So I hope it's going to be more time. We need, I need more time to talk. You need to more this. time, Muhammad. I need more time to talk to these kids, man. I think I have, I can, I can talk to them. I can advise them. I can coach them. I can mentor them, give them a lot of advice. Yes, yes. That is so wonderful of you, Mohammed, and generous. And they need it. Mm -hmm. They need it. You'll be like a primo 
industry advisor. No, that. you you the, the just the fact that you guys are doing this is awesome. Like, and having the opportunity to help you doing it is just a privilege for me. <laughs>